Uh, next speaker is Dr. Kristen Rudisil. Um, Dr. Kristen Rudisil is a professor of popular culture and director of the Asian Studies Program at Bowling Green State University. Her first book, Honeymoon Couples and Jurassic Babies, Identity in Play in Chennai's Post-Independence Sabhad Theater, will be published this year with SUNY Press. So congratulations on your forthcoming book. Her talk today is titled Japanese Dancers, Bollywood Dance, Cultural Exchange in Tokyo's Namaste India Festival. Kristen? Hey, so I'm sharing my screen now. Can you see that okay? Yes. Okay. Um, born from the business sector, following the opening of India's economy in the early 1990s, Tokyo's Namaste India Festival is designed to promote communication and cultural exchange between India and Japan. While this inter-Asia event involves no one of Indian heritage in its planning, the Indian embassy is actively involved and funds a group of dancers to travel to Japan to perform at the festival. There are very few adults of Indian heritage who perform at Namaste India, although the community is well represented in the audience and the vendors. The festival attracts approximately 200,000 people over its two days to watch performances that mostly consist of Indian classical and Bollywood dance, interspersed with traditional Japanese performances and other demonstrations of Indian culture, such as music and yoga. The main attraction is the approximately 20 Japanese groups, mostly comprised of women from Tokyo in their 20s through 50s who perform Bollywood dance. I'm going to show you an overview of the festival here so you can get a sense of the scale. September 29th, 2019, Yo Yoyogi Park, the 27th Annual Festival. Bollywood has come to stand in for Indian culture metonymically, and its performance in this context, I do my sound on, right? Um, represents an embodied articulation of inter-Asia through the communication and exchange that happens between Indian and Japanese dancers and audience members. While dances learned entirely by imitating videos are common at this festival, many Japanese dancers have deeper levels of involvement with Indian culture and people. In this paper, I theorize the idea of inter-Asia by examining the diverse ways that Japan's Bollywood dancers assert their authenticity and by extension devalue other groups without the same connections to the subcontinent, its ideas, and its people, raising important questions of power and access. While many Japanese are fascinated by India and vice versa, there's remarkably little exchange between the two countries, even given the history of the Japan India Foundation which started in 1903, quote, for the purpose of deepening friendship and promoting mutual interests between Japan and India. The early focus was on the economy, but after 1977 moved toward more cultural exchange. Despite sustained promotion of exchange between these two Asian countries, there is little migration. As of 2020, there were 10,000 Japanese nationals living in India and 40,000 Indians living in Japan. In a place with very few Indians, much of the discussion amongst the different dance groups had to do with the issue of authenticity. There's a clear value placed on authentic exchange and disdain for surface or token appropriation of Indian dress or movement. I met one Indian woman who teaches Bollywood dance Bollywood dance school. She moved to Japan when her husband got a job there and waited until her children were grown to start teaching dance, attending the Namaste India Festival every year and thinking that she could teach these Japanese dancers to dance more authentically, closer to how the dances were done in India. She makes sure her students have a foundation in Indian folk dances, such as Garba, Dandia, and Bhangra. She never trained formally, 
but learned the folk dances through community events in India and taught herself Bollywood from the films. And her adult dancers didn't perform um, at the festival, just the children. And when I asked Monica why there was no involvement by her or anyone else from Tokyo's Indian community in the planning and execution of the annual Namaste India Festival, she said they never asked. I interviewed dancers associated with several Bollywood groups that performed at the Namaste India Festival in 2016 and 2019 and found many different stories and connections to the subcontinent. I'll share some stories here and end with questions about larger issues of authenticity, migration, cultural appropriation, and cultural exchange. I ask how the concept of authenticity is framed in this context to validate and evaluate Indian film dance performances by Japanese dancers. Um, <clears throat> Bindu started in 2002 when an assistant film dance choreographer from Chennai was based in Tokyo for five years, where he trained me Khan who grew to love Tamil films and the dance associated with them and has continued teaching, forming the group Sandosham. Mikan makes regular trips to Chennai to work with her teacher and to buy costumes for the group. While some dancers in the group are fans of Tamil film and have traveled to India, most join the class for fitness reason. The connections to India mean that these are considered authentic dance groups but they're marginalized in Japan because their connections are South Indian um, and not to you know, Bollywood or Hindi language. Sahelia, there we go. Sahelia started in 2008 and is all Japanese women plus one American. They're considered perhaps the most authentic Bollywood dance group in Japan. The lead dancer Yukari has a husband of Indian heritage who acts as the group's manager. The two of them travel to Mumbai every year to work with Bollywood choreographers and source costumes and props for the group. Yukari trains the core Sahelia performers in semi-classical, modern fusion, and Dandia dance. Their blurb on the Namaste India website says, quote, our aim is to dance Bollywood so it enables the exchange of cultures and to serve as a bridge between Japan and India. What makes Sahelia stand out from other groups is that its performances are choreographed for them by real Bollywood choreographers. And I'm gonna show you just a few seconds up here. Also considered an authentic group is the Foxy Steppers. Vikram Sampson runs two dance studios in India and teaches Bollywood dance classes at the Japanese school in Delhi. All the Japanese dancers that are part of Foxy Steppers in Tokyo are people whose jobs had them posted in Delhi and took classes with Vikram there. There was even an Indian member of the group who migrated to Japan. This group is predominantly male, unlike all the others at Namaste India, and better reflects the gender balance of Indian groups. They loved Bollywood dancing and didn't want to stop after leaving India. So Vikram will post videos for them to learn from and Skype in on occasion. The group invited him to come and perform with them at the festival and that's him there in the black in the front. Foxy Steppers also talks about making cultural connections and the importance of cultural exchange. Their Indian dancer, Josh, has started dancing to J-pop songs and the group has begun shooting videos that encourage cultural exchange between the two countries with the aim of spreading, quote, cultural awareness and smile across nations by uploading these fascinating videos online and enthralling the viewers. Kathleen Matsui leads the group Tahia and is a multiracial woman who grew up in Pakistan learning Bollywood dance by imitating the film dances she watched on television. So she brings the cultural authenticity of growing up in South Asia and speaking Hindi, but she has zero formal dance training in Indian styles. Kathleen says, quote, I don't use mudras because I did not learn a classical Indian style. I use my hands almost like belly dance. And I like to put some combinations from the movies, same like the movie. So the dancers who are dancing and those who are watching, if they know about the movie, they will enjoy together. She dismisses her own choreography as inauthentic because it doesn't use mudras and she does not have classical training, but it is based on films and she has lived in a culture where those films were the most popular on television. Yuho Sake of Love Bollywood Tokyo 
says that after seeing a 2013 Bollywood film, Golion Kiras Lila Ram Lila, quote, when I saw the Bollywood dancers, I feel like I want to dance. I don't have any background, but I feel like I want to dance because everyone is dancing together, smiling and so much confident. So first I organized Bollywood night for dancing on a weekend. Then three years ago, I started to have a dance team. Because she didn't have any dance training or cultural expertise, she has collaborated with a number of different women who can bring these things to the group. Fumi Mori from the same group started her dance journey surviving cancer. As part of her rehabilitation, she joined a yoga class, then went to India to practice yoga. She says, quote, after I left the ashram, I stayed at a small hotel and I put on the TV and wow, it was the first time to watch Bollywood dance and I loved it. When I came back to Japan, I found a school. I went to the Indian embassy, Vivekananda Cultural Center, and I took a Bollywood dance class. With so little exchange of people between Japan and India, I find it fascinating that this festival is as robust as it is and that it has been going on since 1992. Most cultural festivals on this level are driven by diasporic populations, but this one is not. 1991 marks India's new economic policy and the opening of its economy and its quote, look east policy, which may have encouraged Japanese interest in India. The two governments are now trying to encourage interest in one another's cultures. It's possible the Namaste India Festival is part of this trend. And it's also possible that there's more than just an element of exotica in this surface level fascination in Indian culture, which in many of the cases I've documented here, has resulted in actual interest in Indian films or culture. So it was of course canceled last year um, and I believe they'll be holding the festival um, a little later than usual this year. They're saying the end of November. So I'll stop there and thank you everyone.